I'm going to make this weld as wrongly as possible to showcase some factors that contribute to weld distortion and how to prevent it. Take a real close gander down this pipe while it's still straight. We'll check it out again in a minute. But first of all, I've got a larger gap on the top than the bottom here. My weld's going to pool as it cools, so where there's more weld, there will be more poolage. Anytime you TIG a joint, especially stainless, you want to account for some pooling. Once you understand that, you can use it to your advantage. See how the fitting that I'm tacking isn't level? I'm accounting for the pool, and after I tack the other side, watch the level as it slowly pulls down to right about where I need it. So next here, my tacks are not evenly spaced. You want to try to keep your tacks right at 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock. The bigger gap between tacks will allow it to pull away from that open side. Also, I'm not quartering these welds properly, kind of like this first sketch. What you actually want to do is weld opposite quarters and end in different spots. The end of your quarter is going to pull a little more than the beginning. If possible, roll the piece around in the bench. So when you prep your pipe or any weld, you want the joint and fit up to be as perfect and even as possible so that you can weld it all in the same manner with similar heat input all the way around. Sometimes you might finish a weld and realize that it pulled more to one side or the other, but it might not be too late. You can often dry wash or add a little wire to one side of the weld that needs pulled to bring it back home. Cool it down completely between passes to get the most pull. Also, the throat side of the 90s and Ts pull more than the back side, so weld the back side first, ending opposite of the throat. And if you disregard all of this, you'll probably end up with a banana, kinda like I just did. Follow for more tips.